We are going to go now to the floor uh, and, and listen to what's happening. It looks as though um, they are going to begin this vote. Let's listen in. It's going to be five minutes. They can hold it open for longer, but as Manu suggested, it's not likely to go. You're seeing how that, quickly but you can right see now. See how quickly people are actually yeah. voting. And just watch the bottom number on. The left under yay. Now, I, I guess we don't know if there are 435 members voting today, at least I don't. If there are, that number <clears throat> needs to be 290 to expel George Santos. That's right, because it is two thirds super majority needed in this particular action. Uh, I want to get to you, David Chalian, um, looking at all this and hearing how this really what might be considered a major shift from thinking he was going to get pushed out and expelled to now seeing this shift. What does that tell you about leadership? Even though they aren't whipping the votes, they are making their statement very clear by saying they are not voting to expel. Right. I, you know, we heard Speaker Johnson earlier in the week say that, uh, this should be a vote that is a matter of conscience. I, I would imagine all votes for members of Congress should be a vote of matter uh, of conscience. But uh, he said that he was uncomfortable with it. And then today, obviously, the dramatic development of him saying uh, that he is indeed going to vote against this resolution to expel Santos. And as you're discussing, I mean, I think it is it, both things can be true, right? It could be both the process precedent and the politics uh, that are dictating uh, motivations here. I do think it's worth Noting, guys, if indeed Santos survives this, and we'll see, you're up to 200 yay votes now as you're looking for that uh, two-thirds majority. And as John noted, if all 435 members are present and voting, that'll be 290 to get him expelled. But I would just say, if indeed he survives this, d Democrats uh, would indeed get the best outcome here in the sense that they get to vote to expel him and yet keep him as a poster boy to run against for the, against the Republican Party overall over the next many months. And again, the other number, I'm sorry, Kate, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, just keep an eye on what is happening. What you're seeing is the Republican number of who is voting in, the, in favor of expelling the yeas is, is at 76 right now. 70, now it's at 77. If all members are voting in the chamber and voting, they have now, and all Democrats are voting to expel him. They have potentially passed the threshold of expelling him. However, an important note, they can change their votes. Right. So we do not call this, you yeah. do not, no one declares anything until the gavel lands. They still have two minutes plus left on here. Let's leave this up, guys, and bring up Manu Raju. Yeah, just, just again, well. again, this number right here, 85, yeah. is absolutely enough uh, to, to boot him if they don't change those votes right now. I mean, For context, that's let's talk about the last vote and how he, what, he, what he survived. The last vote to expel, it was, it was 179 in favor. That included 24 Republicans <clears throat> voting to expel. As you can see here, it's far beyond yeah. that now and past the threshold that we have been discussing. However, again, lots of caveats. Until it happens, it doesn't happen. Manu, I think Manu is ready. He's standing on the steps. Manu. You hearing anything out yeah, there? What are you hearing? I'm ready. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this is, it looks like George Santos is done. 88, 89 Republicans are voting to expel him. The magic number was 77. So unless something dramatically changes, this will be a historic and unprecedented vote where George Santos will be the first member ever to be expelled who has not yet not been convicted of a crime, did not participate as a the Confederate in the Civil War. But these allegations appear to be so damning that members said that it is enough. It is time to kick him out of the chamber. I just talked to one of them, Carlos Jimenez of Florida. He said that. I asked him about the precedent. Is he concerned about setting the precedent? He said, well, if the precedent shouldn't be lying and stealing from your donors, that should be enough to get you out of Congress. And apparently, that's how a lot of the Republicans felt here. Eighty-nine Republicans right now are there. Well, Ninety Republicans. There are still 48 people who have not voted yet. They need to get that magic number of 290. 90 if all members are present and voting and we'll see ultimately if they can get there but at the moment he is on his way out of congress which could set up a special election in a seat that democrats could pick up it could make mike johnson's job even harder to advance his agenda because they just got to 290 one member they just they hit 290 the Biden house so so difficult just hit 290 290 right. votes george 292. santos is poised He's to be expelled out. from congress yeah. well, under, with support of republicans and democrats in this historic vote. Unexpected, as we were suggesting, no because kidding. of 
Mike Johnson's opposition, but the decision by the Speaker to say, vote your conscience and not twist arms, not whip members in line. Obviously, many members said enough is enough. It's time for George Santos to go. Republicans, 101 so far, have voted to kick George Santos out. 305 total votes. You needed 290 in order to expel him. This could be a historic moment. Let us go to Melanie Zanona right now um, to give us the very, very latest and what she is hearing where she is. Where are you, Melanie? Yeah, I'm right outside the House chamber right now. And looking at these vote titles, you see Republicans are pretty evenly split here. 101, 102 Republicans now voting to expel George Santos. That is a very big number. That was far more than what was actually needed in order to expel George Santos. Now, they haven't brought down the gavel yet, so it's not final. Nothing's final till it's final around here. But it certainly looks like George Santos is on track to become just the sixth member ever expelled and bringing an end to his very brief congressional career that was filled with drama, scandals, and lies. Uh, now, in terms of what happens next year, I mean, this is going to be treated like a vacancy. So the clerk will assume control of his office, will make decisions on behalf of his office. George Santos, for his part, said that he will go home and he will pack up his office and head back to New York tomorrow and that he will go sort of quietly into the night. And then at some point, the new the governor of New York is going to have to call a special election in the next 10 days. That would set up a special election sometime in the next 70 to 80 days from now. It's going to be a tough race because this is a Biden seat. It's a blue district. Uh, this is something that Democrats have a very strong chance at flipping. And in in the short term, you know, it's going to narrow Melanie, their already Melanie, hang on for a majority. second. We want to get to Manu Raju, who's got someone with him. Manu. Yeah, George Santos there. George Santos coming down the stairs there uh, of the Capitol. Now you hear Manu trying to get to him, and as soon as he gets him, it looks like he isn't saying anything to anyone. He has been talking a heck of a lot before this vote, uh, but now you see this vote. 310. The threshold was 290 to kick him out. We are waiting to see if he says anything there. Let's listen in. Nope. Jumped in the car, closed the door, uh, windows Santos, rolled up. Any comment? Mr. Santos, any comment? Wait, let's go to the House floor, guys. He just gaveled. The speaker's gaveling. Go to the House floor. <coughs> speaker Johnson is in the chair, which is quite significant. Let's stand by and see if, what he's about to say. I just saw him drop the gavel. Here we go. On this vote, the yeas are 311, the nays are 114, with two recorded as present. Two-thirds voting in the affirmative, the resolution is adopted, and a motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. The clerk will that notify means, the governor of the state of New York means, of the sorry, action of the House. That means uh, George Santos is Under Clause 5D of Rule toast. 20, the chair announces to the House that in light of the expulsion of the so gentleman from New York, Mr. Santos, breaking news the and the, the decision House from the House of Representatives order. on this historic vote, George Santos has been voted expelled from the House of Representatives by a two-thirds majority of the House. The final tally, 311 Fellow House members voting to out him. The threshold was 290, and they far passed that. David Chalian standing by. The sixth member of Congress in history to be expelled from the House of Representatives, David. Who just walked by himself out the chamber before the Speaker actually gaveled the vote uh, to its conclusion and got into that car and, and drove away, uh, no longer a member of Congress, uh, as he was just uh, just moments ago. You heard the speaker instruct the clerk uh, to notify the governor of New York of the vacancy in this seat. And this is now, you know, the first time, as you guys have said, uh, where you're not dealing with uh, a traitor from the Confederacy or dealing with a convicted uh, criminal. Uh, this is the first time uh, that uh, somebody's been expelled from Congress that doesn't fit into one of those categories, um, which is that notion of precedence that George Santos and, uh, was raising and, and some Republicans were raising as an area of concern that this was setting a precedent. But this is, uh, this is quite astonishing when you think a year ago, when it was first reported by the New York Times and others how much he had lied 
to the public about who he was, what he was, rep what, what he was claiming to be, a total and complete fraud. And then, as you noted, that, that ethics report that showed that he was using campaign contributions to fund his personal life. Now, he's obviously pleaded not guilty to the uh, federal charges that are against him. Uh, he claims his innocence, and that'll be adjudicated in a court of law. But his fellow representatives in Congress said he's no more uh, befitting to serve in the people's house. And now there is going to be a real political fallout, both in how the House is governed with an even narrower Republican majority now and in the battle for control of the House, because this is a critical district that helped give Republicans the majority in the last cycle and now is going to be really up for grabs both in a special election and then next November.